I am so excited to share with you how easy it is to put together this Halloween escape room. This is great for a trick or treat alternative or especially for adult Halloween parties or teen Halloween parties when they still maybe want that trick or treat candy but they're getting a little bit too old to trick or treat themselves. And although these are designed for teens and adults, actually a lot of the younger children were figuring out the clues as well when we did it as a family. So even if you do have younger children, don't be afraid to try this out. I think they'll enjoy it too. A lot of the clues are just as accessible for them to be able to do. And if you have small children that you're looking for a fun Halloween party for, I will have an option for that coming next week, so stay tuned for that. By the way, if you want more easy Halloween games and activities, I will put a link to a ton of them that we have down below. I think you'll enjoy them. We have some for a whole variety of ages. So let's dive into creating this Halloween escape room. I'll walk you through item by item how to prepare it. The first thing that you're going to want to do is print out our PDF that has all of the materials that you'll need to be able to have the cards and the instruction and some of those clues to be able to put around the table. In our story for the escape room, there is a goblin who has been protecting some trick or treat candy to take to all of the children on Halloween, but there is a witch who is lurking around trying to steal it. So he has locked up the candy with all of these different locks and clues to protect it. And here's where we come in. He got called out last minute and we are going to come and help solve all of these clues to get the trick or treat candy to be able to take to the children. And this little sheet of paper is the note from the goblin explaining all of it. This is where you want to put it the first thing that people see as an introduction to what the room is all about. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to paint the treasure chest. I only worry about the outside, but if you want to do the inside, you can. And go ahead and paint it any color besides orange because we'll be using that for a clue on a second treasure chest later on. So I'm going to go with purple, paint the outside of it, and let it dry. While we're doing that, the first thing you want to do is grab your sheet of all of the printouts and find the card that says, you did it. This is going to be where we put the clue to the final trick or treat prize. So you can have a bag of candy, a couple bags of candy, whatever you want. This is what they'll get in the end, but obviously it's not gonna fit inside of the treasure chest. So instead we're going to use this you did it clue to write the location of where that candy will be hiding. You can go ahead and cut out the you did it clue, write in the location. Then once the box is dried, you can go ahead and put that note inside. I also like to be able to get several pieces of candy and put them inside so that there's an immediate sweetness as soon as they open the box and until they go and find the room that is on the clue to find the entire bag. While the paint is drying, you can also cut out these three additional notes that are on the same page with the you did it that you put inside the treasure box. Two of these cards, the notes and also the hello my name is, can be placed together with a notebook and pen. It's important to have a notebook and pen out there so that all the participants can be able to jot down the notes to the clues that they have. To make the notebook blend in more with the rest of the surroundings, find this PDF that looks like a notebook cover and go ahead and cut it out and adhere it to the front of your notebook so that it blends in. Then you can have all of these items sitting on the table as if the goblin had just left them there. Then with this final card, you're going to find some Halloween books and I just picked up a set of these from the dollar store. They're monster themed and you'll just want to put one of these inside. If you already have a Halloween book, you can just use that and you only need one, but if you happen to have multiple, that's fine. Then as we put this inside, our little letter decoder looks as if it already belongs with the rest of the reading material. Keep these books out, we'll be using them for another step. Once the paint is dry, it is time to start putting our locks on top of the boxes. To secure the box, we are going to use what is called a lockout hasp. This has room for six different padlocks that you can put inside of it, and in order to open it up, you have to get all six of them unlocked, so that's what we're going to do. This hasp is too big for the little lock that we have on there, so I'm just going to get one of these little hair tie, one of the really small ones, and then just put that through the loop. Then once you have that threaded through, you can simply gather both ends together and put the lockout hasp between it. And now it can sit securely on our box and we're ready to start creating all the individual locks that will go inside. The clue for our first lock is hidden in our My Name Is tag and also our Learn To Read tag. So in this Learn To Read, you can see that each letter is given a number and those are going to coordinate with the names on the name tag, so G-A-F. And when you look at the Learn To Read tag, you will find that that number is 716. So our first lock will be 716 Follow the instructions on your lock to be able to set it correctly. Then you can go ahead and put that in the top left corner of the lockout hasp. Now it's important to put it in the top left corner because our little notes say to always introduce yourself first. So introducing ourselves with our name tag is going to be the first spot on our lockout hasp. So that's it. Once you put that onto the lockout hasp, this clue is done. You've already put these into the position that we noticed earlier with the note cards and inside of the book and then you're set. Before we move to the next clue, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and do that right now 
That way you can always be able to be notified. Oh, and hit the notification bell too. So you know every time we post a new video, we love bringing you easy games and activities and even crafts sometimes that make it easy for your family to spend quality family time together. That's our goal is to make it simple so you can do it and enjoy all the fun without much preparation. All right, and now on to the next clue. For the next clue, we will be returning to the Halloween book. And you also want to have one of these invisible ink pens and a black light flashlight. So to do the next clue, just choose any of the books and you can put a code anywhere inside of it that you want and you can just write it in. I have found that it's nicest to be able to do it when there's some sort of a pattern in the background rather than doing it on a solid color, which may be a little bit easier to see if they turn the book just right. If you put it near a patterned area, then it definitely is harder for them to see as they scroll through the book unless they are using the black light to be able to make it shine brighter and know exactly what the code is. You'll just be using three digits and you can put them anywhere you want in the book and they'll have to search through to find it. And by the way, if the participants ever need help, if they've been struggling with a clue for a long time and need just a little hint, I have a hint sheet so you can cut out these little pumpkins and at any point you can give them a hint that relates to one of the clues. All of that is typed up in our direction so you'll be able to know what goes with that and they'll have those handy little hints. For the third clue, you are going to fill a jar about two thirds full with candy corn. Now a lot of the participants may think, oh, I've got to start counting the number of candy corn in there, but it's so much easier, at least on our end, to prepare. You don't have to sit down and count out all the candy corn. Instead, you're going to pull out three candy corns and make sure that the three you choose have a clear white, orange, and yellow section. Sometimes you get one that's a little abnormal and only has orange and yellow or is missing one of the colors. So you wanna make sure you have all three because you're going to use these to write the clue. Choose any three numbers that you want to be the code for the lock. Then you're going to write the first number in the white section of your first candy corn. Make sure to do it on both sides so that it's easy to see inside of the jar. For the second number, you're going to put it in the orange section of the second candy corn and for the third number, it will be in that bottom yellow section of the third candy corn. That's because one of the notes says that candy corn should be in white, orange, and yellow. That will help them know what order to put the numbers that they find. And then once you fill the jar with candy corn, you're going to strategically place these three numbered candy corn in there so that they're kind of near the sides, but people will have to shake up the jar in order to be able to find them. So much fun. Again, they're going to think that they need to count it, but really all they need to do is look for the numbered candy corn. Your PDF also includes this fun white, orange, and yellow sheet. And I like to simply just trace the top of my lid and I will use that to cover the top of it to finish out the look and make it a little bit more exciting than our labeled can jar that we use for canning. One thing that you don't actually need to run the escape room but that adds such a fun touch is holiday lighting. So I used purple and orange lights to create an amazing atmosphere and honestly it transformed the room with just that simple touch. So I used some purple light strands and then I also have this LED strand and you can change it any color you want. So I made it orange, I put it at the top and I put those purple lights along the countertop and it made a huge difference. So if you wanna add that as well, I will put links to what we used. Again, it's not necessary, but it's so much fun. And I also did add in a few additional Halloween decorations that again, weren't necessary, but it was fun to kind of throw them off the path a little bit by having some little ghosts and bats and pumpkin garland throughout the table. And they thought, is that having to do with the clue? But really it wasn't one of them. So, and I added in some additional pumpkins as well that again, weren't part of it. But it was just fun to create an atmosphere and throw in a couple extra elements so it wasn't obvious what everything was in there. They had such a blast. For the next clue, you want to start with a glass jar that could resemble a pumpkin. I found these at the Dollar Tree. They're little candy dishes where the lid lifts off, but I liked the round nature. And I thought you can paint the inside of this orange and you could even if you wanted to paint the lid of it brown. I went ahead and painted the whole thing orange. And so then you can see that you kind of have this pumpkin. Then you're going to want to get a permanent marker and you're going to write your code on the outside. And then you also want to get a dry erase marker. Now, if you already have some, like I have one in the game to so if you already have some in games, great. If not, I do like the expo markers as well. So whatever dry erase marker you have, then you're going to simply take your code and then fill in the rest of the numbers around it. And you can tell at the end we'll have a whole pumpkin that is full of numbers. And in order to be able to solve the clue, they're simply going to erase all of them. And then they'll notice that the dry erase ones come off and your permanent marker does not and that's going to give them the clue to the code. For the next clue, you want to get your second treasure box, paint the outside of it orange, and that is so that it will line up with this I can see you, which is our next clue. When it's orange, it will sit right over that orange box and be a perfect fit. While the paint is drying, go ahead and cut out the four pumpkins that spell welcome to our pumpkin patch. Now, if you want, you could create these into a banner 
or in my space there's not enough room for a banner so I'm just going to tape them using painters tape onto the cabinet and then they'll be able to hang up above where I want a pumpkin patch to go but before I put them on that pumpkin patch which is our next clue first I want to find some googly eyes I'm going to put a whole bunch of googly eyes throughout the whole entire space but I'm going to save three googly eyes and those are going to go onto our welcome to our pumpkin patch sign we're going to do two of them on the two C's one in welcome and one in patch and one in the U in pumpkin. That coordinates with our I for the googly eyes can see you. So we have two C's and the U. And you'll notice that those purple letters coordinate with the same purple letters. That's the only time you'll see that font in the set to try and give the participants a clue that it's there. For most participants, you'll want to use this one, but there is an alternate, which is just the letter I for I can see you. So if you want to make it extra hard and make them make the connection between the letter I and the googly eyes, that's the more difficult version. But for most people, I recommend just using the I icon can see you. For each googly eye that will go on those two C's and the U, you want to write a number at the very bottom. If you look closely, you'll see it, but from a far distance, it's going to blend in with the black and the rest of the googly eye, making it hard to appear unless they're looking really close. Then you're simply going to adhere them near the letters and then you can go ahead and hang up your welcome to our pumpkin patch sign. Once your treasure chest is finished drawing, you're going to put a black light flashlight inside of it. This is going to be what we use to see that invisible ink that we put inside of those Halloween books. If it comes with a little bubble wrap, I suggest putting the flashlight inside the bubble wrap in case anybody shakes the treasure chest around trying to figure out what it does. Once you put it inside, you're going to go ahead and put a lock with that I can see you on it. So remember, the code for the I can see you, those two C's and the U that you put on the googly eyes, that's going to go on the treasure chest, not on the lockout hasp. They have to solve that one first in order to be able to get that black light flashlight to solve the book clue that will open the lockout hasp. And I like to make sure that I put these in two totally separate areas in the room so that it's not an easy connection that they go together, but it's going to take some thinking. Now it's time to create the rest of our pumpkin patch. You want to start by getting a green poster board and a set of pumpkin stickers. Make sure that the stickers are large enough that you can write numbers on them. Then go ahead and write as many numbers as you want. We have about 60 filling up this poster board. Once all of your numbered pumpkins are on the board, it's time to identify what the key code is going to be for the lock. So you want to choose one single digit number and one double digit number. In our case, I'm going to do 5 and 41. So the code will be 541. So then you want to get some magnets, make sure they're pretty heavy duty. Then take one of your magnets, put some tape on the back of it. Then you're simply going to go onto the back of your board, put it behind the number and tape it down. And then you can see when somebody uses a magnet, these two will be placed around the room. As they start to get closer, it's going to have that magnetic pull. That's going to identify the five. And then we'll do the same thing on the 41 and that will give them their three digit code. Our final item is actually not a key combination. It's a lock and key. And in this case, we are building a graveyard. In the note that the goblin left, he said that he had to go solve a mystery at a graveyard. So we have our mystery question mark that is going to be our clue. This set comes with two keys and I hid one key inside of a Twinkie. I just went in through the back side and then kind of tried to put it up in the middle through that opening that it has with the inside filling. And then that way they're going to have to go through and figure out that the clue is the mystery in the graveyard, open up that Twinkie and they will find the key. If you want, you can also decorate your graveyard with some additional ghosts. I found these super cute ghost marshmallows and so I just put those in. And then you can also decorate the rest of the little tombstones that you have with the rest of your frosting as well to have it be whatever it says. Just make sure one of them is a question mark and it has the key inside. And if you want, you can always wrap the key in a little bit of saran wrap first so that when it comes out of the Twinkie, it's nice and clean. So that's it. It's time to go set it up, get it all ready for our participants. I can't wait. I hope you have so much fun doing this Halloween escape room with your groups as well. Again, for all of the instructions, in addition to this video and all of the downloadables, make sure to visit familyfed.com. I will put a link to that in the description down below so that you can get all that you need. And I'll also have links to all of our Amazon supplies as well so you can purchase them there. For more Halloween ideas, also be sure to check out the link in the description down below. We love doing games and activities. And if you wanna see more from us in the future, more escape rooms or more family activities and games that you can do for holidays and even for every day, check out familyfed.com, subscribe here. We can't wait to see more with you. Bye-bye.